iSpring Suite gives you a really powerful tool for managing your presentation structure and permitting branching and navigation. What's really great is that you can manage it all from the Slide Properties section of iSpring Suite. I'm going to show you how that works. To start off, make sure you're on the iSpring Suite tab and then head on over to the Slide Properties tab. You'll see right away that there are a ton of options here. I'm going to help navigate you through them so you know exactly what you're doing and can get the most out of iSpring Suite. In the Slide Properties window, it's easy to edit a slide's title by selecting it or hitting F2. This title appears in the outline after you publish your course. If there's a slide that should be included in the presentation file, but you don't want it to appear in the outline and play it in the output presentation, simply hide it by selecting the Hide Slide button. You can hide slides individually or select multiple slides and hide them all. It's also possible to right-click and choose Hide in order to hide your slide. To make a slide visible again, select the slide, right-click, and uncheck Hide Slide, or even easier, just double-click on the hidden label. It's also possible to organize your slides into multiple slide levels. To promote and demote slides, use the arrows at the top, the green arrows beside each slide, or by right-clicking. Again, if you want to change the level for multiple slides, select them and use the buttons on the toolbar. Of course, you'll always have the option to change them back. When you publish, you'll see that the slides that have been labeled hidden don't show up and you have a drop-down menu for demoted slides. Now let's look at the advanced options. You can set up a slide to advance to the next one automatically after a specified period of time or on a mouse click, or both, which means that the slide will appear for a select period of time, but if the student is ready before the time is up, they can click the slide to move on. To adjust how long the slide will appear, change the time here. And set the slide duration in PowerPoint by going to Transitions and checking the Advanced Slide After box. The timings will be the same as in the slide properties. Now let's look at the branching options. The branching option enables you to specify a path for the user to advance through the presentation, which means that you can set the order the slides will be displayed, regardless of their position in the presentation. Here, you're given the option of what will happen when your student moves forward or backward in the tutorial. By default, the forward branching is set to take the student directly to the next slide, but you are also able to customize it to go to any specific slides or to none, which will mean that your students won't be able to move forward. I'm going to leave this at the default for now. Branching for quizzes also works in the same way. Here, depending on the outcome of the quiz, I can redirect them forward into the rest of the tutorial, close the window, or move them back into earlier slides. I'm going to set this to go back if they fail, so they can review the material. If I check out the preview, I'm brought back to the material for review. Okay, let's take a look at the player controls. You can restrict user navigation by disabling the player navigation controls. If you lock them, navigation will be disabled for this slide. To turn on the lock, simply select the slide and click the lock icon. I'd also recommend making sure advanced slide on mouse click is disabled as well. And if you want the slide to advance only when the right amount of time has elapsed, just turn on the auto advance. See, I can't move past this slide until the time has elapsed. In order to add a presenter to a particular slide, the first thing I have to do is head to the presentation resources tab. Now that I have my presenter added into the system, I'll head back to the slide properties, select the slide I want to attach the presenter to, and then head to the presenter drop-down menu to select. We see that the presenter has appeared on the selected tab. Of course, you can also add a presenter to multiple tabs at once as well. Now all of these slides have a presenter. Your presenter info may appear at the top of the outline or at the bottom depending on your player settings. Now let's take a look at how I can assign different layouts to my player. Just head on across to the Layout column in Slide Properties. Simply open the drop-down menu to show your slide layout options. No Change, Full, No Sidebar, and Maximized Video. This is a nice feature because it means that different slides can have different layouts that are better suited to them. I'm going to change this slide's layout to Maximize Video. Now let's see how the next slide will look with no sidebar. In order for your video to play, you have to make sure it's turned on in the player settings.
All right, let's see how this looks in the preview. See how the layout changes for these slides? The next thing I want to look at is playlists. iSpring Suite allows you to create audio playlists with an unlimited number of audio tracks and apply playlists to any presentation slide. Select the Playlist button, then select Manage Playlist. I'm going to start a new playlist, name it, and then select OK. Once you've created your playlist, you're now able to add tracks, delete tracks, move them around, and here you can choose your audio volume as well as whether or not to loop the playlist. When you're finished setting up your playlist, select the drop-down menu and choose your playlist. Or select it by right-clicking, and of course, you always have the option to apply it to multiple slides to make the playlist play across selected slides without any interruption. See how my playlist continues when I move from slide to slide. The last thing I want to show you is how objects work in slide properties. By selecting this Add button, you can create a new quiz, interaction, or simulations, or you can insert learning objects that you've already created separately. If your slide already contains a quiz or simulation, you can remove or edit as well as set branching conditions or set additional properties. There are so many ways to manage your presentation from iSpring Suite. Now that you've watched this tutorial, you should have a pretty good idea of how to get the most out of these settings.